Jesus with the series that we went through on Sunday night and Wednesday, and uh, we haven't had some for a while. And uh, some years ago, I, I, I'd had a book about Proverbs, and they had a memory verse from Proverbs from every letter of the alphabet. So I dug that book out, and I've, I'm afraid I made them a little small, <laughs> but I've got 26 memory verses here, A through Z. The only one that's not in Proverbs is Z. Okay. So, and that's in Revelation, so close. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to do that, feel, feel free. Uh, some of them are classic verses. You, you may know some already, uh, ones that are, are just kernels of wisdom that come up regularly. And, uh, you know, some are ones that even non-Christians kind of know, you know, because the Bible kind of permeates our Western society. Uh, others are ones you won't be as familiar with, but each one will, will be a blessing. And then when you're done, before you go to sleep at night, you can just lay there and go through the alphabet and say every one of those to yourself. And at some point, you'll probably fall asleep. <laughs> Maybe you'll finish, I don't know. Uh, Proverbs chapter 7, we're looking at. And uh, let me start by reading verses 1 through 5. That's pretty much the introduction of the chapter. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. We just stop reading there. And he gets right into that, that subject. But you know, this, this warning about immorality, it, it's, this is the fourth time it's come up in seven chapters. So this is something that God knows is a concern and something that uh, we need to be, uh, be understanding. The, uh, particularly the first part of Proverbs, it's like it's written to his son. Maybe it is. I, I don't know. Um, Solomon. And in, uh, in chapter 1, verse 8, for instance, uh, my son, hear the instruction of thy father. Verse 10, uh, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. And then at uh, the beginning of each chapter, uh, chapter 2, my son, if thou wilt receive my words. Chapter 3, my son, forget not my law. Uh, you, you get the idea. E each one is directed to my son. And the, the lure of immorality is not new. <laughs> you know, it didn't start with uh, our, our generation. Uh, it's been around a long time. Solomon uh, knew of it. Uh, they say that it's, it's one of the reasons Rome, the Roman Empire fell, is because of immorality. Uh, some years ago, we, we visited Pompeii. Have you ever heard of Pompeii? It's covered over by ashes, and they lost track of it, and then they found it. You know what, what they found on the walls of Pompeii? Pornography. Uh, it, it's been around a, a long time. And uh, that's what he's talking about here in, in chapter 7, is... Uh, the danger of immorality. Look at, uh, let, let's, let me read quite a, a bit here. It's fairly self-explanatory, but we will go back and look at some, some of the details. Chapter 7, starting in verse 6. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She's loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I've decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I've perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. cinnamon. Come and let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the goodman is not at home. He's gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. 
He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stalks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Quite a portion of scripture, isn't it? Um, in looking at it, you see the different characters, and I thought, well, that's, that's the way we'll, that, that I want to approach it tonight. And I'm going to call, I, I didn't want to just say the man and the woman, because um, the person doing the, the wrong thing can be either a man or a woman, and the, the one being uh, lured can be a man or a woman. So we'll call the first one the victim. And the Bible says there in verse 7 that he is simple. Now, we understand that word. It means silly, naive. Uh, he's just not looking ahead. He's just, just simple. Uh, he uses the expression, he's void of understanding. Doesn't have a clue what, what the real issues are. In, in verse 8, basically, he's, he's looking for trouble. Uh, he went the way to her house. He wasn't just out wandering around. He, he knew where he was going. And uh, part of the problem in verse 9 is that he's not a person of the day. You know, the Bible says as Christians, we should be people of the day. That doesn't mean you can't work at night and you can't go out at night or that kind of thing, but uh, we shouldn't, that shouldn't be our main focus. Um, sometimes I'll be at someone's house, and, and I know they don't work, but they're still in bed at noon or whatever. Well, the reason is they've been a person of the night. You know, they've been goofing around all night, and now they're wasting their day. And, and it, pretty soon it snowballs, and they never get anything done. Uh, here's a fellow who's not a person of the day. Verse 21, you see that he's weak. This little girl forces him against his will. No, not against his will. <laughs> um, with much fair speech, she causes him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. That just means he, he didn't have the character to, to do what was right. He was weak. Verse 22, he goeth after her straight away. He's impetuous. He's ready to go. Uh, and that's the characteristics that the Bible talks about here in this passage of, uh, of this side of, uh, of, the, uh, of the formula. But then you see the other side. Call her the perpetrator, uh, the one pushing the issue. In verse 10, it's some interesting things it says about this, this person. There met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She's dressed like a harlot. Now, that time they knew what it was, and in this time people know what it is. You know, there's just a way people dress that uh, people know what, what's going on. Unfortunately, for some time, many of the styles have been designed by harlots and homosexuals. <laughs> and that's just the honest truth, isn't it? And as Christians, many times uh, we can't, we can't follow the, the patterns of the day. But anyway, he says she, she dresses like a harlot, and as well that she is, um, she is subtle of heart. It's not just the outside, it's also uh, her heart. That word subtle means crafty. She's tricky. You know, she's not just open and above board. Verse 11, I, I found this interesting. She's loud and stubborn. You don't have to know Hebrew to understand that, do you? Uh, stubborn basically has to do with rebellious. And, you know, one of the things that our job is as parents is to help our children not to be this. You know, rebellion and that is, is natural in the heart of a child. And, and as parents, we have to help them to, to get rid of that. And God has given us the, the tools and the understanding of how to do that. In um, verse 12, this, this lady is not a keeper at home. You know, in Titus 2.15, 2.5, it talks about how godly women should be uh, wives and mothers should be keepers of the home. That's not what she wants to do. She, now she's without, now on the streets, lying in wait at every corner. Uh, she likes to run around. Verse 13, she's impudent. Uh, with an impudent face, she said in him. What that means is she's the aggressor. She's on the attack. A young man, watch out. <laughs> there's, there's women who are uh, there after you. And there's another place where it says what they really want to do is they want to eat you like a piece of bread. They want to just make you worthless. Um, and one of the main characteristics of a person like this, the Bible says over and over, is that they're a flatterer. It, you can read verses 15 through 21. She's just basically saying, man, I've just been waiting for you. 
you are so great. I, man, I've got all this, and it's all for you. Um, in chap every section where they, they talk about this, it, it talks about that characteristic. Chapter 2, verse 16, uh, to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. In chapter 5 and, and verse 3, the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Boy, she can really talk. Chapter 6, verse 24, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. And then uh, chapter 7, verse 5, uh, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, the stranger with flattereth with her words. You know, flattery is different than a, a real compliment. You know, when somebody compliments your character, uh, th that's one thing. But when they're trying to use you, that's a different thing. Uh, it's a sales technique. It's, it's a, a way to get, get your way and so on. And it, it, its intention is, is wicked. Now, as you look at these characteristics of the, the perpetrator here, unfortunately, basically, these are the characteristics of the modern woman. Bold, you know, get out there. Uh, impudent, don't stay home. Dress however you want, you know, use your craft and wiles, and, uh, you know, but that's not a godly woman. And the results, if you look at, uh, continue on there in verse 24, chapter 7, verse 24, Hearken unto me now therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, nor go, uh, go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And one of the terrible results of this kind of life really is bitterness and loneliness. Uh, people who, who live for sexual immorality or uh, for immorality in general. You know, the Bible says that uh, we're going to get the results of, of what we do. And there's those who live... Now, what's, what's the verse where it says that they enjoyed the pleasures of sin for a season? If, you, if you've lived for more than five years, you know that seasons don't last very long. But you also know that what you plant in the spring, you're going to harvest later on. And, uh, you know, when, when people are planting this kind of life in their youth, they, they don't, you know, like he said, they're simple. They're, they don't have, uh, what was the other word he used? Vo they're void of understanding. They don't think that someday they're going to be middle-aged. Someday they're going to be old. And if they don't have a real love relationship or love relationships in their life, man, if all they've been doing is using people and, and uh, living for immorality, uh, it just leaves them alone and lonely. And, you know, there's so many homes in our, our community where, um, you know, people could help each other, but they've, they've ruined the relationships. In, um, there's a verse in Ecclesiastes written, I guess, by the same author Solomon, where he says, I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. More bitter than death. You know, bitter and, and lonely. And he goes into some other areas here in, in verse 23. To me, this sounds like disease. Uh, is often a result of immorality, till a dart strike through his liver. Um, in chapter 5 and, and verse 1, I've written down the wrong reference there. Anyway, I'll, I'll have to... Anyway, I've, I've written down the wrong reference. So, um, Not only disease, but damage uh, comes from, from immorality. Chapter 6, Verse 26, he says, By means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can you imagine having a fire in your pocket, in your pocket here? <laughs> it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to burn you. And that's what he's saying. Uh, immorality brings damage. It, it brings harm. In chapter 6, verse 33, it brings dishonor. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. You know, there's some people who are characterized by their former immorality. Uh, you know, that's just the, the way they're, they're thought of. 
they've dishonored themselves and their relationships. It also can lead to violence. Chapter 6, verse 34. Jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare on the day of vengeance. Often in the news, you hear of people killing and harming each other because of immorality, because of all, all kinds of uh, uh, loss of, of honor. And you know, there, there's just all kinds of results to, to immorality. We lose physically. Uh, in chapter 5, verse 9, this, this is not a real fun subject here tonight, but it's a, it, obviously an important one. Um, chapter 5, verse 9 uh, he talks about how we, we lose honor. Uh, Lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Uh, we lose time. You know, when, a, when a person is immoral, sometimes they end up where their time is not their own. You know, they, they, have their, they give their years unto the cruel. Uh, that could include prison and all kinds of things. Uh, you can lose your wealth, verse 10. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. You can lose your freedom. Uh, verse 11, you can lose your health, and thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, how have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof. Uh, people lose a lot through immorality, but you know, they also lose spiritually. Uh, it leads you away from God. It, it puts you in, um, the, in under the influence of, of people that are, are not godly. Although it's interesting that that, that perpetrator, the lady in chapter 7, one of the things she talks about is, is her religion. Did you, did you notice that? I've paid my vows. And, you know, it's funny how religious immoral people can be. Um, sometimes when I meet people who are very, well, as far as I know, are ungodly, a lot of times they'll call me reverend. They're the main people that call me reverend. <laughs> well, reverend, you know. <laughs> um, and that's, that's fine, but uh, they, they lose, not only physically, they lose spiritually. In, in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 17, he says, "...which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead." Uh, similar to what he said there in chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7, verse 27, "...her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death." Uh, it doesn't lead to life. It doesn't lead to good things. Uh, it leads to bad things. And, and over and over, he gives this warning in the book of Proverbs and, and other places. In verse 24, Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Well, what can we do? What can we do? Well, number one, we need to listen to the Lord. That's what he's saying. Hearken. Listen. In chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law is the apple of thine eye. See, we don't want to approach life like that young man, uh, void of understanding, simple. <laughs> you know, there's, there's the fool, there's the simple. Uh, we don't want to be either one of those. We want to be the wise. Uh, listen to the Lord. Don't be like this kind of person. In, in 1 Corinthians, he says, what? And he's talking to Christians. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? you have of God and you're not your own, for you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So don't be like this, this kind of person. Uh, you know, think like Christ. If you don't know how Christ thinks, get, get out his thoughts and, and read them. <laughs> Memorize them. Uh, meditate on them. Act like a Christian. I don't mean act like an actor. I mean just in your actions. Uh, do what a Christian should. Uh, like he talks about here, dress like a Christian. You know, as Christians, we shouldn't have the attire of an harlot. Uh, uh, dressing like a Christian will draw attention to your countenance. Yeah, we don't have any rules about how we dress around here, but it should be modest. I've never kicked anybody out, and I probably, probably never will. The most we might say, can you put this coat on or something? But, uh, you know, when we dress, it should draw attention to our countenance. Secondly, don't be with them physically. There, there's a real danger. I, I've even heard of people who thought, well, I'll just have a ministry to this kind of people, and to the down and out or to the immoral, and, and sometimes it, it afflicts them. Uh, in, in chapter 5 and, and verse 8, he says, Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. 
in chapter 4, verse 14, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Now, that doesn't mean we can't witness to them, and we can't minister to them in that way, but we probably shouldn't do it alone. You know, we should go, like the Bible says, two by two. Don't be with them physically, but especially don't be with them mentally. And we live in a day where there, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of things we watch and think about, and if you're not careful, you're going, to get, you're going to be sympathetic to the bad guys. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of television and, and things on that uh, they're trying to get you sympathetic toward immorality and toward the, the person doing the wrong thing. Don't be with them mentally. Uh, chapter 6, verse 25, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Now, there are people who are experts in drawing you in attracting you. In chapter 7, verse 25, let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. You know, some of the things that this would include would be pornography and wrong thoughts and just admiring the wicked and thinking, oh, that, that might not be too bad. Now, don't be with them mentally. Do be with godly people. Now, make sure you spend time with, with godly people. Now, the reason I say that, Proverbs 2, verse 20 Many verses in Proverbs, but Proverbs 2, verse 20 says, That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. Uh, in chapter 13 and verse 20, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And then 1 Corinthians 5, 11 is a portion where he's actually talking about church discipline. And uh, one of the things he says is, I've written unto you not to keep company. If any man that's called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, with such an one, no, not to eat. So he says, he's talking there, it's 1 Corinthians uh, 5, verse 11. The, the whole chapter is about uh, morality in the, in the church. And uh, he says that there's, there's things where uh, we shouldn't... We shouldn't uh, be with that, that kind of a person. We do need to be with godly people. And, and really, all this is in contrast to what we want in our lives, really. Uh, practice real love. And to do that, you need to understand from Scripture you know, what it is, how God loves you and how God intends for us to be. You know, love is really the highest relationship. We have a lot of relationships that I guess in a way don't really involve love, you know. You're driving down the road, you have a relationship with all the other cars. You don't have to love them. <laughs> all right? Be nice to them, be godly and all that. But it's, not, it's a very weak relationship, you hope. Um, but love is the highest relationship. And, and as you come in contact with people and then you develop a relationship, uh, the best you can do is, is a love relationship. And, and that's not about immorality. Uh, you know, there's, there's just all kinds of weird things going on now. It's hard as a Christian sometimes to know what to think, but uh, we need to understand what the, the truth is. That's the way we'll know the faults, is by knowing what's, what's true. Uh, practice real love. Uh, real love is faithful. Uh, it doesn't come and go. You know, if somebody says, oh, I used to love him, but now I don't. Well, they never did. Uh, that's not real love. Uh, love, doesn't, love doesn't just love a part of a person. I really love that about him. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> you love the person or you, or you don't. Uh, you love always, you love all. Uh, but unfortunately, we often use the word love selfishly. You stop and think about it. But when you talk about people, you say, oh, I really love that guy. And what you're talking about is things about them that you love. But real love comes from you, not to you. You, you know, when you're talking about it. But when we say I, we love someone, what we should be saying is, I have a commitment to them. Uh, I want to help them be better. It's not just saying, oh, I like this, I like that, and I avoid them when they're like that <laughs> kind of thing. It should be something we give, not something that, that we take. Love is, is faithfulness. And, and marriage is a covenant of faithfulness. Uh, marriage is where we make a unilateral agreement. Say, I'm going to be faithful in this relationship. It's, it's a covenant. Uh, so you can see there, there's a whole lot there, isn't there? And uh, we need to be careful that we're not... Uh, pulled away into the patterns of the world. And to do that, we need to be firmly grounded in the patterns of God's Word and of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Any comments or, or questions?